guys, welcome to this episode of Tending with Tyler. You ever had one of those trips where you should just give up and go home? That's the trip I'm having so far. So you saw my drive in, that road was nasty, so I'm trying to camp up on Cinder Lake. Now, creek crossing, no problem. After that, that hill, I could not get up. I got stuck for a good five, 10 minutes. Managed to get myself out. Now, even with the all wheel drive and reasonable clearance with that Mazda, I could not make it up that hill. So I turned around, I drove into another lake and it is four portages into Cinder. <laughs> and uh, if I portage up two lakes, third portage, I can't even get to. It is so overgrown and muddy. No one has been up in this area for years. I'm sitting in a fire pit on another lake. Like, as you can see, there is not a coal here. No one has been here in years. So I'm just having a break here with a beer, trying to figure out what I'm gonna do. I will probably portage once more back into the main lake and <laughs> book a site there. Because Lord, I, can't, I, I just can't make it to Cinder today. It is too late in the day. It's six o'clock. We got two hours of daylight left. I've just been getting my butt kicked out here. Oh, like gale force winds. I spent 10 minutes stuck against a log in a log jam because the winds were so strong. I could not get that canoe to go where I wanted to. So I just sat there had a beer, just waited for the winds to die down enough for me to go. So it has been one of those trips. Anyways, I'm going to have this beer and figure out what I'm going to do. We're going to figure something out and have a night out. I have a lot of cool new gear to show you guys. It has been a long time since I shot a video, but uh, yeah, we're going to have fun no matter what. I'm already just blown. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I'll bring you back in a little bit once I decide what I am doing. moved you guys a bit closer because it is still super windy. Like I can't believe how windy it is today. It is nice. It's keeping the bugs away, but I apologize because your audio quality is probably not going to be great. Now, as you saw, my new canoe, Nicole and I's new canoe. It is a Swift Kiwaden 16 foot Kevlar Fusion. So it weighs 39 pounds, super light. My whole life I've been paddling around heavy, heavy plastic canoes, 80, 90 pound canoes. And we decided it was time to get an ultralight canoe for a big canoe trip we have coming up. Since it's super windy, guys, I'm not going to talk too much. I'm going to get as much as I can set up. Um, we're not even going to be able to have a fire tonight. There is no wood out here. See what there is around, but odds are I'm going to be sitting in the dark. Anyways, I'll bring you guys back in a few minutes.
<sighs> well guys, we are out of the wind. It's a little quieter in here. It is hot though. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't shoot any of canoeing footage. I was just fighting that wind the whole time. Now I, I solo canoe all the time and this is probably one of the worst times I've had fighting wind. <laughs> now with the Kiwaden it is 16 feet and it is light. It's very very light so that wind just wants to push you all around. Normally like it's not too bad but it's it's very very windy today so it is what it is. Anyways we are in the Durston X Mid 2. Now I'm sure you saw me setting up with hiking poles. It's not going to happen forever. Um, I do like this tent for canoeing as well because it is very light. One, just under one and a half pounds is nothing. Um, but I have ordered special poles that work with this tent directly from Durston Gear. The X Flick poles or Z Flick poles, I believe they're called. Uh, they were $133, but carbon fiber and they pack up to the same size as the tent, so 12 inches long. It'll be much friendlier for long distance canoe tripping. Anyways, we got a few new pieces of gear for you. It's been, it, like I said, it's been a while since I have shot a video and I have got a lot of new gear. So number one on the list, I have a quilt. Now, a synthetic lightweight quilt is very hard to find. Now, I do not have this in a compression sack, so it is, it is a bit big right now. Um, but this is a Enlightened Equipment Apex Revelation minus one degree sleeping quilt. That is a mouthful. <laughs> it weighs 1.43 pounds, so this thing is super light for synthetic it is very lofty it has got a three-quarter zip foot box so you can have it open like a blanket or you can zip up the foot box to keep your feet warm we don't have to do that because it is very warm tonight I think it's still going to be 13 or 14 degrees overnight so I probably won't even sleep with this. Um, so price tag on this guy, it set me back $320. Now that is very expensive, but a good quality quilt or sleeping bag, you gotta pay out the nose for. It is just an unfortunate part about camping. Um, I am slowly, very slowly shedding weight from my gear kit, so this is one of those items. I love this quilt, guys. I would say minus one is a very, very accurate temperature. That's Celsius. Um, I have taken this out in minus five, and I was okay, but I was chilly. So this is gonna be a you know, late spring, late fall sleeping bag. Anything over minus five, you're going to be very cold in this for sure. So I would say the comfort rating is very accurate, which is not always the case when it comes to sleeping bags, as I'm sure you guys know. Anyway, fussing with the zipper here. So yeah, you got three quarter foot box, which is nice on the cooler nights. You can zip it up and cinch the foot box closed, which really does help retain your heat. I was worried that there would be a, a, a hole that my toe would fit through, but it cinches up tight, so not a worry. Now it does also button and clip together, and it comes with extension clips, so you can put it all the way around your sleeping pad and clip it together. Haven't used that yet, it is still too warm for that. But we'll try that out in the fall for sure. Very, very happy with the quality of this quilt. We're gonna get the rest of bed set up here. And I'm gonna sit out by the lake and have a drink.
right, guys. Now for the piece de resistance. We have got something I am super excited about. Uh, this is a gift from my lovely girlfriend, Nicole. Again, she buys me all the cool things. We've got the Nemo Moonlight Elite Chair. Crazy awesome. <laughs> I've used it a bunch so far this season. And I am very, very impressed with this. So price tag, you're looking at a whopping $250. But the weight of this thing is crazy light. I can't remember the exact weight. It is just under or just over a pound. I'll pop that up on screen for you, but it is it's crazy light. There's so much I like about this chair. Now it's not perfect for sure, but it is very close. <laughs> so you can see it's got a really, really neat uh, storage bag. Uh, the form factor, it is a bit big. It's, it's pretty close to the same size as the Helinox. Um, but this is as small as it goes. You've got this clasp here that you undo. Everything comes out. Pretty standard pole assembly. Now what's different about these is normally you have a slip on, these actually clip on. Which we'll see how long these last. I was a bit concerned when I first got it about the function of these these little nipples here I feel like you know over time they may just break off but it has been really really good as bottom and you clip her on just like that. Now these tensioners here is to recline, which is super nice. Um, you pull back and the seat goes back, you pull forward and you pull yourself up. It is a really, really neat design. Also, if you are on very soft ground, which I am right now, so I'll be using this, stuff bag is also for the feet. So you've got these little flaps that the feet go into. And just like that, that way you don't sink into soft ground. Now it means that your stuff bag is going to get dirty for sure, but Everything gets dirty when you're camping. What's the difference? Oh, love it.
this guys well I found half a bag of wood <laughs> over in the trees over here so either someone did not want to haul it out or they were being nice and left some behind so I'm gonna burn a couple logs have this beer leave a little bit left so I'll probably leave four logs for the next person that way you know there is some firewood here because this is gonna be nice and then crawl into bed and maybe watch a movie Well guys, I don't think that flex tail mosquito repeller is doing much. I'm getting bit quite aggressively. As you saw, I hung my food. Now that is not a correct bear hang in any shape or form. Do not use that as an example as what you should do. <laughs> Options are limited here. I'm in a pine forest. There's not any low branches that are any good. Um, low enough branches that I could get a rope on. Now the biggest thing, you know, a bear is going to get my food if he wants it, regardless how I hang it. They are crafty. They are great climbers. They're smart. I do it more, to be honest, for the devilish chipmunks and mice, because they will find a way. They always do. They will chew right through your bag, right into your food, and it could be right beside you and they'll be in there eating your food. <laughs> so I always hang it. Now I do go quite a ways away from camp just to be safe. You know, if the bear's gonna want my food, he can come in and take it all the way down there and not disturb me. Anyway, always hang your food. You know, that goes along with you know, cutlery, anything you haven't washed very well, put it all up in a tree, may as well be safe. Especially out in areas like this, this is heavy, heavy bear country. I've encountered so many out here on these lakes. It's just part of camping. Anyways, I burnt a couple logs down and uh, we've left some wood for the next person. That's always good camping etiquette. Thank you to whoever left that wood here. That was lovely. Even though it was only a half hour fire, it was still nice to have a bit of a fire to sit around. Anyways, we are going to let that burn down for a few more minutes till it's safe and crawl into bed. It's time for a movie and I'd like to show you one last thing. The flex tail is also a lantern, which I really love. You'll see it in the tent. Well, guys, it is bedtime. Now, 
That is the flex tail as a lantern. Now what I really like about it is the soft light. Now LEDs are great, they last forever on one charge, but I find the really bright white lights just just too much. So that's why I really like this. It's it's bright, but it's a nice soft yellow light. And this is on low, so this this will run. Oh, I can't remember. I have to look up the specs, but it'll run for 20 plus hours on low, uh, and I believe it's 10 hours on high, which is enough to light up your whole campsite. Like it's crazy bright. Like that's bright. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I am going to get comfortable. I'm going to throw on a movie and fall right asleep. It has been a hard day of paddling, hard day of fighting wind. Good morning, guys. The best part about this tent is if it's wet inside, so inside of the fly is soaked, you can take the inner tent down, stuff it away, and store this separately so next time you set up, if you're on a multi-day trip, the inner tent doesn't get soaked from the fly. It's my favorite feature about this tent. It comes in handy mornings like this when, you know, it's wet and you have to get out you don't have time to wait around camp to let it dry out, you know. You've got places to canoe to, places you gotta hike to. Awesome feature. I slept pretty good last night. Not great, but good. For some reason, I've been waking up at 2.30 a.m. on the dot all week, every morning. It is so strange. I don't know why. Hopefully that stops soon because it really, really does disturb your sleep. guys I am gonna get a move on I slept in a bit later than I anticipated and I got to clear out before the next people come to the site tonight thank you so much for watching uh, hit the like and subscribe button it really helps the channel I'm getting out to do a lot more videos now that I got a bit more time on my hands thanks for watching guys